Geysers The formation of geysers is due to particular hydrogeological conditions, which exist in only a few places on Earth, so they are a fairly rare phenomenon. Generally all geyser field sites are located near active volcanic areas, and the geyser effect is due to the proximity of magma. Generally, surface water works its way down to an average depth of around 2,000 meters 6, feet, where it contacts hot rocks. The resultant boiling of the pressurized water results in the geyser effect of hot water and steam spraying out of the geyser's surface vent a hydrothermal explosion. Castle Geyser is a cone geyser in the upper geyser basin of Yellowstone National Park. It is noted for the particularly large geyserite center deposits, which form its cone. These deposits have been likened in appearance to a castle. The Castle Geyser has a 10 to 12 hour eruption cycle. The geyser erupts hot water for about 20 minutes in a vertical column that reaches a height of 90 feet 27 meters, before changing to a noisy steam phase that issues for 30 to 40 minutes. The center cone for Castle Geyser has been dated to around 1022 using carbon-14 dating. This date is much younger than the originally presumed age of 5000 to 15000 years. 3D laser scan made of the cone reveals evidence that this geyser has evolved through four to five distinct stages to reach its current configuration. In November 2002, an earthquake in Denali National Park and Preserve Alaska, caused Castle Geyser, as well as other geysers in Yellowstone, to decrease in eruption frequency. The affected geysers have returned to their previous pattern since that time, however. El Tadio is a geyser field located within the Andes Mountains of northern Chile, at 4,320 meters above mean sea level. Its name comes from the Quechua word for oven. It is among the highest elevation geyser fields in the world. El Tadio has over 80 active geysers, making it the largest geyser field in the southern hemisphere and the third largest in the world. Its geysers erupt to an average height of about 75 centimeters, with the highest eruption observed being around 6 meters. The site is a major tourist attraction. Visitors generally arrive at sunrise when each geyser is surmounted by a column of steam that condenses in the cold air. The steam plumes disappear as the air warms up. It is also possible to bathe in the hot geyser water in a small pool. There is wreckage at the site from an old project for harnessing geothermal power. The idea has recently been revived by the Chilean government and is meeting with heavy public resistance due to the touristic value the geyser field represents. The Great Geyser, is a geyser in southwestern Iceland. It was the first geyser described in a printed source and the first known to modern Europeans. Eruptions at Great Geyser can hurl boiling water up to 70 meters in the air. However, eruptions may be infrequent, and have in the past stopped altogether for years at a time. The research of Cinder shows that Geyser has been active for approximately 10,000 years. The oldest accounts of hot springs at Hockadiller date back to 1294 when earthquakes in the area caused significant changes in local neighboring landscape creating several new hot springs. Changes in the activity of geyser and the surrounding geysers are strongly related to earthquake activity. In records dated 1630 the geysers erupted so violently that the valley around them trembled. In 1845, it reached a height of 170 meters. In 1846 the research of geyser by Robert Bunsen resulted with the explanation of the mechanism of geyser activity. Measurements of Professor Bunsen in this year showed that geyser was erupting 43 to 54 meters high. A further earthquake in 2000 revived the geyser again and it reached 122 meters for two days, thus becoming one of the highest known geysers in history. By July 2003 this activity had again decreased to around three times per day. The Waimangu Geyser, 
located near Rotorua, in New Zealand, was the most powerful geyser in the world. Its workings were apparently created by the great 1886 Mount Tairaira eruption, which opened a 17 kilometers, 11 miles, long fissure down the mountain, through Lake Rotomana, and a Waimangu volcanic rift valley. The geyser was first seen erupting in late 1900. Its eruptions were observed reaching up to 1,500 feet, 460 meters, in height, and it excited worldwide interest. The water expelled by the geyser was black with rocks and mud from the surrounding terrain, so the indigenous Maori people named the geyser Waimangu, meaning black waters. In mid-1904, the geyser became dormant for several weeks and subsequent eruptions were shorter and weaker until they stopped on November 1, 1904. After the geyser became extinct, hydrothermal activity in the nearby echo crater increased, leading to a rupt. The Valley of Geysers is a geyser field on Kamchatka Peninsula, Russia, and has the second largest concentration of geysers in the world. This 6 kilometers, 3.7 miles, long basin with approximately 90 geysers and many hot springs is situated on the Kamchatka Peninsula, in the Russian Far East, predominantly on the left bank of the ever-deepening geyser Nyaya River into which geothermal waters flow from a relatively young stratovolcano, Kaipnich. Temperatures have been found to be 250 degrees Celsius, 500 meters below the caldera ground. IIT is part of the Kronotsky Nature Reserve, which, in turn, is incorporated into the World Heritage Site volcanoes of Kamchatka. The valley is difficult to reach with helicopters providing the only feasible means of transport. The pulsating geysers of Kamchatka were discovered by a local scientist, Tatyana Ustinova, in 1941. She published her findings 14 years later, but there was little exploration of the area until 1972. A systematic survey was undertaken in the mid-1970s, and an automatic monitoring system was introduced in 1990. Over 30 geysers were given names, among these was the giant geyser Vilik, capable of producing a jet of water reaching up to 40 meters, 130 feet. From the 1980s, the area was promoted across the USSR as one of the tourist magnets of Kamchatka and the Russian Far East. Foreign tourists were allowed into the valley in 1991. About 3,000 tourists visited the site annually. On June 3, 2007, a massive mud flow inundated two-thirds of the valley. The World Heritage Site also expressed its deep concern over the issue. On June 5, it was reported that a thermal lake was forming above the valley. The landslide occurred while the documentary Wild Russia was filmed. It features footage of before and after the disaster. The extent of permanent change is not yet clear, but may be less than was originally thought. As of June 9, 2007, waters have receded somewhat, exposing some of the submerged features. Vilanton Giant Geyser, one of the field's largest, was not buried in the slide and has recently been observed to be active. Vilakon Giant Geyser is the largest of the regular functioning geysers in the valley. Boiling water fountain reaches 35 meters high, steam rises for hundreds of meters. Eruptions are short and intense, several dozens of cubic meters of water shoot up the air in less than a minute. Eruption dies out as quickly and unexpectedly as it starts. For several minutes after the eruption, stream of boiling water runs down towards the river, Gyeizernaja. One of Vilakon's interesting features is that there are multiple water outbursts, for up to 2 meters high, before the actual eruption. Such false starts can happen up to 10 times with half an hour breaks between them. 
This can get really frustrating even for the most patient observers. In the era of film cameras an experienced photographer could waste half a roll before having a chance to shoot the actual eruption.